train warranty, IP&E, fueling excellence, McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurants. Always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Starting now on primetime, the governor of the CNMI has announced the Commonwealth's first coronavirus death. Plus, Guam Governor Lou Leung Guerrero shares what efforts are being done to contain coronavirus on our island. And local businesses impacted by COVID-19 are urged to submit Small Business Administration loan and grant applications. Half a day, my friends, and good evening. Before we get to the latest on the co containing COVID efforts on Guam, we begin with highlighting one of our island's frontline heroes. Governor Ralph Delong Guerrero Torres, the governor's COVID-19 force, and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation has confirmed that one patient suspected of COVID-19 has passed away today, March 30th, 2020. A specimen has been sent out to Guam Public Health Lab, and we are waiting, awaiting the results of COVID-19 testing. Guam Public Health Lab has assured us of making this test a priority as soon as it is received. This patient was a 70-year-old elderly male CNMI resident. He was seen at CHCC on March 25th and was considered to be a person under investigation, a PUI. Based on this clinical determination... And of course, we do send our heartfelt thank you, N.C. Masi to May and everyone on the front lines fighting corona virus for your sacrifices and your very very hard work and for your love during this crisis all right now we are going to get to the guam angle just momentarily but about 90 minutes ago there were new developments to report by way of a facebook live stream up in the cnmi where commonwealth governor ralph torres late this afternoon wrapped up a press conference from the commonwealth's health center that announcing that a patient suspected of covid19 had passed away governor ralph delonguerrero torres the governor's covid19 Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation has confirmed that one patient suspected of COVID-19 has passed away today, March 30th, 2020. A specimen has been sent out to Guam Public Health Lab, and we are waiting, awaiting the results of COVID-19 testing. Guam Public Health Lab has assured us of making this test a priority as soon as it is received. This patient was a 70-year-old elderly male CNMI resident. He was seen at CHCC on March 25th and was considered to be a person under investigation, a PUI. Based on this clinical determination, CHCC issued an order of quarantine for the patient and his wife to be cared for at Kanoa Hotel, the designated quarantine location. Unfortunately, he has an underlying multiple medical condition conditions. A treatment plan was offered, but next of kin opted for comfort care at the hotel, which was adequately provided. The deceased male had no travel history, but in contact with someone who had tested positive for COVID-19. This past weekend, the governor held a press conference announcing that two individuals in the CNMI, a man and woman, marked the first two confirmed cases up in Saipan. One of the confirmed cases went to the CEC on the 25th. CNMI officials, however, said the contact did not occur at the hospital. They additionally warned their community that they should act as though everyone in the CNMI has COVID-19, as we do on Guam, and to practice social distancing, as we do here too. The CNMI governor also announced that the curfew there no longer applies to children, but to everyone in the Commonwealth of the Northern Medianas. Well, back to news on Guam. Governor Lulian Guerrero says multiple efforts are now underway to contain COVID-19 and to prepare Guam in the event that there is a surge in the number of positive cases. Sabrina salas Matanani has our next story. During our morning radio show containing COVID, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero says that discussions are underway to prepare for a spike in COVID-19 cases. The goal is to increase our capacity to at least 2,000 hospital beds. We're looking at even bringing in blue med uh, plants. We're looking at Army Corps of Engineers offering this conversion from a facility to a hospital facility. We're also looking at um, 
bringing in a barge. Um, there's been an offer uh, to bring in a barge that can be hospital uh, retrofitted. Tasked with working with the Army Corps of Engineers is National Guard Adjutant General Esther Agigi. She is reaching out to the island's medical community to complete a report that will be submitted to the governor. Additionally, there are plans in the works to help Guam's homeless population. According to the latest numbers out of the Joint Information Center, two of the positive COVID-19 patients are homeless. We're trying to either get tents or some kind of temporary structures to uh, house them in. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we are very concerned about the homeless, too. I think there's like about 100 in Hagatna. So we're looking at places that we might use to um, house them close by to a facility that has, you know, bathroom and showers and so forth. So um, our FEMA, I mean, our uh, response team is uh, focused on that priority. While efforts are underway to contain and prepare for the worst here on the home front, in the nation's capital, President Donald Trump announces that he is extending federal guidelines aimed at slowing the spread of the coronavirus until April 30th. I'm looking at what, uh, what is evolving in the next uh, week, and there's certainly a possibility to extend that some more. Like I have always said, it would be much more tragic if we prematurely lifted anything and then we, we start off again with contamination. The governor says we are not out of the woods and urges the community to continue practicing social distancing, good hygiene, and stay home. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Sabrina Salas, Matsunani. And that was a part of an extensive conversation that the governor had with Chris and Sabrina on containing COVID. And we've got that coming up for you at the bottom half of the hour right here on TV8. Well, while Guam works to contain COVID, the coronavirus continues to spread throughout our nation. Here's more on the latest. President Trump says he is extending federal guidelines aimed at slowing the spread of the coronavirus until April 30th. Thank Last week, the president said he had hoped to have the nation raring to go by Easter, a comment that raised concerns from much of the medical community. We had a, an aspiration of Easter. We don't want to have a spike up. We don't want to do it soon. And then all of a sudden you go down, you're coming down, and then you start going up again. The president also said by June 1st, the nation can expect to be well on the way to recovery. What I want is I want our life back again. I want our country back. I want the world back. I want the world to get rid of this. President Trump also predicted the peak of the death rate is likely to hit in the next two weeks. Nothing would be worse than declaring victory before the victory is won. That would be the greatest loss of all. Earlier, Dr. Anthony Fauci said the U.S. could eventually see millions of cases and between 100,000 and 200,000 deaths. We've got a serious mm -hmm. problem in New York. We have a serious problem in New Orleans, and we're going to be developing serious problems in other areas. Late Saturday, the CDC issued a travel advisory for the New York region after President Trump said he wouldn't announce a quarantine for that state, New Jersey, and Connecticut. He spoke to the task force, he spoke to the governors, and he was comfortable that people would take this advisory very seriously. In Maryland, authorities are struggling with an outbreak at a nursing home with at least 66 confirmed cases and one death. We generally found that the, uh, the facility was doing most everything they were supposed to be doing. And in Detroit, where cases are growing rapidly, the June auto show has been canceled. Instead, the venue is being converted into a field hospital. Nicole Killian, CBS News, the White House. Trump did say the first FEMA flight with 80 tons of respirators, gowns, gloves and face masks arrived in the Empire State today. Back on Guam, our governor over the weekend inked a deal with the feds to provide pandemic unemployment assistance to Guam. That agreement is necessary because Guam lacks unemployment benefits of its own. The program would provide assistance for everyone who is unemployed, partly unemployed, or furloughed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Gita's Ricky Hernandez and Labor's David De La Sola have been tasked with standing up the initiative. The latter tells KUM News during the Containing COVID morning show that hundreds of emails have been sent to the address rapidresponse at dol.guam.gov, equating to thousands of islanders having had their jobs adversely affected by coronavirus. Nearly a thousand um, emails and uh, roughly we have about 2,400 um, displaced workers and about 
13, 1400 reduced hours of people reporting into that site. But that doesn't really include too much of the Hotel and Restaurant Association. GHRA President Mary Rhodes tells KUM News that 3,000 hotel and restaurant workers locally have either had their hours cut or lost their jobs due to COVID-19. While the agreement has been signed, this program is new. De La Sola said he could not provide a timeline and when the first checks will be put into displaced workers' hands. The hardest part is for us is I'm trying to get the, from them the application process and the forms so that we can see how much we can try to automate because the, the difficult part of this program would be to, when you're in quarantine, to keep the people safe from spreading the disease as they apply for the assistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's... You can kind of see the challenge that we have. De La Sola advised displaced workers and employers to send their information to the email address. Once again, that's rapidresponse at dol.guam.gov. Workers would need to include the name of the employer that issued the layoff, furlough, or hour reduction. Employers would need to disclose current and pending layoffs, furloughs, and hour reductions. You can also call 311 for more about the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. Delisola said the feds have not said how much assistance the program will offer displaced workers on island. Another perspective now, local companies who are being impacted by coronavirus should start getting their SBA loan and grant applications in as soon as possible. As Nestor Lecanto explains in our next story. During a typical disaster, the Small Business Administration would send a team out to assist the local office process applications. But the coronavirus crisis is not typical, says Guam branch manager Ken Luhan. And businesses are encouraged to apply online at www.disasterloan.sba.gov slash ELA. He urges patience, though, because the website has been swamped with applications. Keep in mind that 50 states plus the territories are actually applying for this loan. Um, we received word uh, on Monday, but last week, Friday, California alone had submitted 700,000 700, applications in, in our website in one time. So imagine, uh, you know, the amount of work Guam's going to put in the, and the patients we're asking them to, to have as they start to migrate into that website. He says a variety of assistance is available and the SBA can help find programs to fill long-term and immediate needs. Basically, uh, we can give out loans up to $2 million with a term rate of uh, long-term uh, maturity of 30 years. Whereas the Express Bridge loan program is actually limited up to seven years. Uh, the financing would be subject to uh, mm -hmm. uh, the bank's rates and then at the same time too, uh, it's limited just to working capital as well. However, Lohan says businesses with existing loans won't be able to refinance. So these are going to be operational debts like paying rent, paying payroll, uh, paying utilities, things of that nature that would have uh, been incurred during the time that the, uh, the the virus had taken place. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. And while the military locally remains silent on the status of testing and the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt, national media are reporting uh, the number of cases Taylor's exceeds 40. A carrier docked at Naval Base Guam on Friday with the Navy having reported that all 5,500 sailors aboard will be tested. Now, 20 of those seamen are originally from Guam. The Navy has also said the sailors would be quarantined on the ship, stay pierside, and not venture out into the island community. Governor Leon Guerrero during media briefings has repeatedly deferred questions about the Navy ship to the military. The Teddy Roosevelt was last on Guam in the first part of February. And the first wave of arriving passengers from the Philippines were scheduled to be released Wednesday from the mandatory two-week quarantine. Although there is a petition filed in Superior Court by Department of Public Health and Social Services Director Linda DeNorsi to extend that time frame. Court documents state that DeNorsi asked the court for an order allowing her authorization to continue the involuntary quarantine or isolation of travelers to Guam on March 19th to be extended until the end of April or until determined free of the coronavirus. We're preparing as, as we speak and uh, it's an ex parte that we have to uh, have the court petition for authorizing us to continue the detention, uh, whether it's for isolation or quarantine. It's because we have the 10 days that has to be filed with the court. And in, in doing so, we wanna make certain that all the respondents are able to have their due process. 
Now, during the governor's daily press briefings, DeNorsi informed the public that she will be summoned sometime this week to appear in court for that petition. Effective midnight tonight, incoming passengers, regardless of place or origin or transit, are subject to a 14-day quarantine at a government-designated facility upon entrance to Guam. If the traveler has a health certificate clearing them of COVID-19 in the past 72 hours, the quarantine will not be applicable. To education news now, the Guam Department of Education will be meeting with the island-wide PTO via Zoom on Tuesday, during which time John Fernandez will bring them up to speed on how they'll move forward should clo school closures be extended past April 13th. Fernandez announced today the launch of an online website for parents to lead instructions at home. Beginning on Monday, April 6th, there will be weekly instructions for elementary, middle, and high schoolers. Fernandez says accommodations for those without internet or computer access at home are being explored, and there will be an announcement very, very soon. We anticipate uh, the schools activated for lessons, uh, being able to, to go home to support our elementary through high school students. Uh, the other interesting thing that we had to deal with along the way was, you know, deciding how are we going to deal with grading, especially mm -hmm. if this, you know, this closure is extended. And then especially how are we going to deal with grading and credits for, um, for high school students, especially the seniors mm -hmm. who were looking forward to graduating, you know, on you can access that website by going to www.gdoe.net. Fernandez announced that starting Tuesday, they'll be adding breakfast meals to the Grab and Grow Lunch Initiative. Elsewhere, more than 2,500 people have signed a petition urging Governor Leon Guerrero to move babies and the maternity ward from the designated COVID-19 patients, GMH, to the COVID-free Guam Regional Medical City in Dededo. Jeroen Gendali penned a letter to the governor urging the move last week. She has yet to receive a response, but... Saturday, she gave birth at GMH. She did express her frustration with what happened when she was discharged yesterday afternoon. Gandali says she and her husband were both told to go to the discharge area and to leave their baby behind. This is unusual because I've given birth there before. This is my third child. And usually one of us stays with our child. We came back and we found our child in the break room with multiple nurses. I uh, heard she was in her car seat already and on the cart. And we found her, initially we didn't find her where we left her, which was where the nurse's station was. They placed her car seat on top of the tape uh, counter. And then we come back, she wasn't there. We looked into the room, she wasn't there. So we were in a panic, go running towards the nursery because we thought we, they brought her back there. We found her in what looked like a break room with about eight to 10 nurses. She reported the incident, she says, to the supervisor and was told it will be looked into. She cites what happened to her as a reason why that she feels that pregnant women should not be giving birth at Guam's only public hospital. I just think it's safer because there's no real, I mean, exposure, having exposure to a newborn, I just think it's peace of mind having your, the mothers and the COVID patients separate. Just for precaution and being proactive. Prevention. Discussions are underway to move the maternal child health care department to GRMC, but GMH Administrator Lillian Posada says nothing is set in stone at this time. She says protocol is in place to minimize exposure. Well, please stay tuned. We are just getting started, and prime time will continue right after this. Tuesday Guam is still preparing the dishes you love for either curbside carryout or delivery. Call them at 647-7828 or 647-7829 for curbside carryout service with a smile. For delivery, download the free Grab and Grub app and follow the instructions to get Ruby Tuesdays delivered to your door. Stay safe and healthy, Guam. Attention Guam business owners, Green Energy Solutions would like to help you save on your power bill. We supply various LED lighting, energy efficient air conditioners, solar thermal VRF systems, and solar panels. You can count on our product warranty and quick turnaround and immediate response service. GESI has saved other local businesses over 80% off their power. Call us to see how much we can save your business. Call us today at 647-8111 or visit GESIGuam.com for more information. When we face an uncertain path, 
when we struggle with life's challenges. And when the unexpected happens. It's a beautiful day. We rely on the people we trust. Who we can always count on. And the ones who give us the most care throughout the years. Rely on Calvo's Select Care to give you the comfort and security you need. It's a beautiful day. Wherever you are, Calvo's Select Care, health care that's always there for you. It's a celebration at Cars Plus Guam. During our Jeep celebration event, receive up to $2,000 off on the all-new 2020 Jeep Gladiator, the most capable off-road mid-size pickup truck. Customize your Gladiator the way you want it. Call 477-7807 or visit our website and get pre-approved online at carsplusguam.com today. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back, everybody. A pair of firefighters with GFD are recovering tonight after they were injured while responding to an incident last night. Here's agency spokesman, Firefighter Kevin Riley. Our firefighters were dispatched just after 7 o'clock to the area around the Latin landfill in Iran. Uh, upon arrival, our firefighters began to do com uh, commence uh, extinguishing operations. And during that, uh, two of our firefighters were injured. Although he couldn't disclose the nature or cause of their injuries, he does say this. I can tell you that our GFD investigators are looking into it with the assistance of uh, the Guam Forestry Fire. He says both firefighters were brought to Naval Hospital in Agana Heights, where they are currently recovering from non-life-threatening injuries. And with the island currently on a fire watch, he had this to say about conditions. We need to stop the outdoor burning. The embers can travel, they can set fires. Um, you know, it, this not only endangers houses and residents and causes erosion environmentally, you know, uh, long term, uh, but also, you know, as we can see from this example, Unfortunately, you can injure our firefighters, our responders as well. In no small part due to the firefighters' work, as that is their colleagues and their team, the fire was contained just after midnight. Well, the National Weather Service has issued a red flag warning for Guam in effect beginning at 7 p.m. tonight through Tuesday at noon. That warning means the critical fire weather conditions are either occurring now or will shortly. A combination of strong winds, low relative humidity, and warm temperatures will create favorable conditions for the rapid spread of wildfires. In other news tonight, 61-year-old Bolin Nirechichal was arrested this morning for shooting off a pellet gun at passing cars along East Gadzanero Street up in Jigo. Just after 10.30, GPD officers from Dededo responded to the complaint. And according to agency spokesman Sergeant Paul Tapao, one person was transported to Guam Regional Medical City for treatment. The Sarge says based on witness reports, officers were able to identify Nirechichal as the suspect. He was charged with aggravated assault, reckless conduct and criminal mischief. He was booked and confined at DOC. The case has been forwarded to the AG. Now, an audit was released today and other news relative to the operations of Games of Chance at last year's Liberation Carnival. The results show there were multiple deficiencies and violations of local laws. Some of the deficiencies include revenue tax personnel lacking the expertise in game room operations, backup withholding on gambling winnings that were not conducted, placing heavy reliance on winners to self-report to the agency on their income tax filings, Gaming operators were illegally using cash during games and concerns for the personal safety of Remtax staffers assigned to provide oversight. The vendor fees forecasted for the gaming operations was over $550,000, with total overall collections amounting to $414,000. Auditors also found Guam lacks a gaming control commission for gaming activities. Now we've got a quick update on tax refunds now for you as the agency announces 
Almost 400 tax refunds have been processed and will be mailed this week. That's over $2.2 million and for error-free returns filed on or before October 19th. Well, a feel-good story for you now is for her Take Action project as part of the Guam Girl Scouts, 15-year-old Emma Flores of Troop 253 decided to make face masks and donate them to a Barragata store. So last week, my mom and my troop leader went to Happy Mart, and they could not go in because they had no masks. Worried that some wouldn't be able to go in because of a shortage of masks on island, Emma found a YouTube tutorial and using material from her grandmother, sewed 20 masks and donated them to Happy Mart on Thursday. Crystal Flores is Emma's very proud mom. I watched her and she was really motivated to get it done. And uh, it was her very first uh, sewing experience. Um, and so she did a lot of pinning and a lot of cutting. And it, it was really, I'm really proud of her to, to see how she was able to come up with a, a problem for this, a solution for this problem. Emma's a Tizen High freshman and has been with the Girl Scouts for seven years. That is a true island hero there. Great job, Emma. Well, please stay tuned. Dave Delgado has the night in island sports right after this. Make every day a plus. Hafaday, I'm Bernie Valencia with Matson. Our local Matson team understands that these are very trying times for everyone. Matson's top priority, like yours, is to keep our family safe and healthy and ensure you have what you need. We'd like to give you peace of mind that Matson's service continues on schedule and uninterrupted. Matson is committed to our weekly service from the United States West Coast to Honolulu into Guam and Saipan. We are working with the Port Authority of Guam and providing the capacity and services our customers need so they can continue to meet your needs. Matson will take all appropriate measures to ensure continuity of service into Guam and Saipan. When we work together to take care of our family and neighbors, we will emerge from this as a stronger island community. This public service announcement was brought to you by the Port Authority of Guam, KOAM Communications, and Matson. As our island continues to band together to protect our families and communities from the effects of COVID-19, we at GCA want to assure you that we are here for you. Should you need to contact us for any reason, you can chat with us online at www.gta.net, connect with us on Facebook, or call us at 644-4482. Families are at the heart of what we do, and we are committed to keep you and yours safe, healthy, and connected. GTA, we start with you. <laughs> Just watch it later, bro. I'll ask your mommy to do it for you since you still live at home. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to do my own laundry. laundry. Green Energy Solutions, Inc. would like to congratulate GU Self Storage along with Calvo Enterprises in doing their part by going green with a monthly power reduction by over 80%. Power consumption before installation was 39,700 kilowatt hours. After installation ended in 6,221 kilowatt hours, which resulted in savings over $10,000 a month. GESI also offers LED lights, solar thermal VRF air conditioning, and solar photovoltaics. Visit our website and let us help you save. Nearly two full feet of pizza, 24 pieces. Wait, 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 really? 24 pieces? <laughs> That's a lot of pizza. <clears throat> Four epic sauces. The Big Dipper, only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching tonight on the show. We're going to hear from UOG Athletic Director Doug Palmer. What's next for student athletes, classes, scholarships, and leagues? Check it out. Pretty much we just tell them to stay in contact with the university's website and the information you know that's there and the public information that's from 
the actual offices of the of Gov Guam and just don't follow a lot of the rumors and stuff that are, that are out there. You know, go to the official sites, but try to use the university as much as possible. All University of Guam varsity and club sports are suspended until the fall semester. Guam and the university's move to online-only classes for the remainder of the semester were announced March 19th through a press release. Yeah, no, the kids get to keep their scholarships. Actually, uh, if they haven't used all their money yet, you know, I've, I've been, I told them to, you know, get me in any other names that, that you have that we want to give a, a scholarship to for, for this past semester, what we were able to play. So, because the money that we do get for scholarships, we don't get to uh, keep it for the next year. We have to get rid of it or, or it's swept. So we're going to try to spend every dollar that we have to the students. And so hopefully a few of the students will be getting some $500 type checks uh, sometime soon uh, to help them uh, at, at the end of the semester. The Triton women's basketball team will return to play on September 8th. The Trident women's club volleyball team is scheduled to start October 6th. The Triton men's basketball team will return to play on October 27th. Men's and women's soccer will return for play in the fall in the Guam Football Association leagues yet to be determined, along with the newly reinstated men's baseball team, also a possibility for fall pending player recruitment. I told the coaches to uh, continue to recruit as best they can, mostly by, of course, telephone, social media, email, uh, contact the high schools and try to get coaches' numbers and things since we no longer have games to go see and play. So, and we're not sure when we'll be able to have tryouts. Uh, we may not be able to have tryouts until the fall comes. So we need to try to recruit as best we can. And most of the coaches are pretty much into basketball or soccer on the island. So they know the students that are, are, are recruitable. So we will start trying to recruit them and uh, hopefully get, you know, some recruiting classes. For more information, contact Doug Palmer, Athletics Director for University of Guam at 735-2862 or email palmerd at triton.uog.edu. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, installed the Docomo whole home Wi-Fi, what did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects, and I don't have to get out of my car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. Um, my favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag. Like, before it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes, and I have to hang up and then call her back, and now I don't have to do that. You know what's a good thing, too, is that when you come over to visit, I can give you your own password. I can assign a time limit so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour, so that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. It's a celebration at Cars Plus Guam. During our Jeep celebration event, receive up to $2,000 off on the all-new 2020 Jeep Gladiator, the most capable off-road mid-size pickup truck. Customize your Gladiator the way you want it. Call 477-7807 or visit our website and get pre-approved online at carsplusguam.com today. Nearly two full feet of pizza. 24 pieces. Wait, wait, wait. Really? 24 pieces? Oh, that's a lot of pizza. <clears throat> Four epic sauces. The Big Dipper. Only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist, or over 20 years of experience. <laughs> Just wash it later, bro. Well, ask your mommy to do it for you since you still live at home. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't even know how to do my own laundry. laundry. We got a lot of birthdays on tonight's birthday shout out, so here we go. All right, everybody, a lot of birthday celebrants to get to on March 30th. So happy birthday to Jennifer Napati from your family. Also, happy birthday to Zephyr John Pangolin Campbell, who turns five today. And happy belated birthday wishes tonight to Evangeline Reyes, born on the 28th. Happy birthday, Vanjie. You are very much a gift of life to be celebrated. Enjoy your blessed day with happiness and gratitude. We love you, says your family. Laura Rose Rio Narun. Happy birthday number seven from mommy and daddy who say we love you very much. Aurora Marilano has a birthday today and it is Aurora's 77th birthday. And happy birthday to my mom. That is awesome. That's the shout out. Amber Nicole Bazapangalinen wishing our daughter Amber Nicole a happy birthday number 19 from mom, dad, and the 18 Pangolinen. Also happy birthday wishes born on the 29th to Daniel Lazama II. Happy birthday, Daniel. Margaret Santos Canata, also born on the 29th. Happy birthday to a special lady, our aunt, our mama Margaret. We wish you many blessings, always and forever, from Trish, Benny, and the boys. Georgia Rose Santos uh, celebrates a birthday, and happy birthday from your in-laws and the kids. They all say they love you. Dylan Farron has a birthday, and happy birthday, Dylan, from Marcus Dimian. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, happy birthday to Anne Therese Sablan Babalta, wishing you the happiest and most blessed birthday with many more to come from your favorite uncle and the whole MacShot clan. We love and miss you. We hope each and every one of you had the best birthday ever, and please, everyone, stay home and be good to you. Remember, you can enjoy the birthday when you're staying home and self-quarantining. And since you're home, why don't you go to KUM.com, click on birthdays, and register your celebrant. Register several, in fact. You got time. All right. That's going to do it for the show. We will see you tomorrow. Please, everybody, stay inside, stay safe, stay healthy, and let's all be good to each other. Bye-bye. Closed captioning is brought to you by Green Energy Solutions, Inc. Visit GESI.